Spectra Cloud had recently announced support for existing Kubernetes environments, including cluster on public cloud services, obviously, like Amazon EKS, Azure EKS, and Google GKE, which means that brownfield Kubernetes environments can now also enjoy the same Spectra Cloud features that are available on Greenfield Builds. To deep dive into this announcement, we have with us Tenry Fu, CEO and co-founder of Spectro Cloud. Tenry, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you. Before we get into this announcement, uh, since you are here and you are one of the co-founders, I want to understand from you, how would you define Spectro Cloud? What problem, what challenges you saw in the space that you co-founded this company, this project? We are focused on providing the Kubernetes management for enterprise. We want to provide the best platform right, uh, in this regard. So what we see is um, really there's still a big gap between dev and ops. Right? Uh, so developers, they want the flexibility on Kubernetes, but uh, ops, obviously, they want the manageability, they want supportability. And a lot of solution t uh, today is still very rigid, right? They may uh, help enterprise to manage Kubernetes, but um, they will not provide the flexibility that developer want. Uh, and that uh, oftentimes seems a, a, a contradictory goal that uh, you want to have both flexibility and uh, reduce, uh, uh, comp uh, you want flexibility, but you also want to reduce uh, complexity and improve uh, your operation efficiency. So uh, Spectral Cloud, our goal is really to provide a single platform that uh, through our unique uh, uh, profile-based management approach that uh, we can satisfy both sides of the requirement. Right, so developer gets the flexibility they need, but operation team in the meantime, they reduce uh, the operation um, uh, complexity and also improve the operational efficiency. I want to also talk a bit about how have you seen uh, the evolution, uh, adoption of Kubernetes, because now it's no longer in a phase where companies were evaluating it. Uh, now it's, it has gone in production. What does that actually mean? Uh, because it also means that you know customers are facing new challenges that they did not see when they were evaluating it. So, so talk about uh, just just your thought process of this evolution of Kubernetes. What we see is uh, the Kubernetes evolution and the adoption, right? So it went through kind of a three phase. So the first phase uh, is kind of a experimental phase, right? So that uh, obviously is very developer focused. Uh, so developer will start a new container-based project. They don't mind, do it yourself, right? Kubernetes is an open source project, so they can stitch a bunch of component together to, to manually deploy and manage Kubernetes and container application. And then the second phase, it go to the kind of early production, right? So that's the time IT operation team get involved, right? Security and uh, manageability, supportability become more important. That's where uh, the IT ops team start to adopting some of the enterprise grade Kubernetes like Red Hat, OpenShift, right? VMware, PKS, uh, Rancher, or uh, if you are on public clouds, there's a bunch of cloud managed service like EKS, AKS, or GKE. Um, however, a lot of these solutions, I think they are relatively rigid. Uh, they not necessarily uh, support the, all the different integration that developer enjoyed right in their first phase. Um, so, and and then when enterprise go to the third phase, when Kubernetes become uh, the the in the mainstream, right? So now I think enterprise are facing additional challenge because now you have many Kubernetes in place. Some are new, some are existing, right? And uh, how to manage all these clusters all together at scale, right? Uh, and those clusters potentially even in different cloud environment, that become a particular challenge. And, and special cloud, we are very much focused on help enterprise to solve all these problems. I, and in the meantime, provide both flexibility and optionality. Do you see these customers are the kind of uh, trying to standardize or their deployment on what platform and one set of technology stack, or they are trying to mix and match things? Because you know, I just want to go deeper into what you just explained. I think um, consolidation with uh, less 
Kubernetes vendors definitely is happening, right? Enterprise, they want to reduce the complexity in terms of management. Uh, so more and more commercial solution out there and the less uh, do it yourself. Uh, however, the technology stack that I think uh, the in terms of additional add-ons, uh, uh, additional complexity on the choice of add-ons, that is just uh, proliferating, right? So there's really there's uh, no one size fits all story in terms of Kubernetes end-to-end -end technology stack. That's why developers they still want their flexibility, but in the meantime, operation team they want to re reduce the complexity. Right, and they want to still be able to manage all those together. Right. At the same time, you know, uh, multi-cloud, hybrid cloud is also, you know, the new story there. And that is why when I look at a Spectre Cloud, and you're supporting all three major platforms, and I'm sure in the future you'll be supporting all. Because I think customers, what they're also doing is that as much as they do want to cut down on complexity, but one platform may be offering an amazingly incredible machine learning technologies. One is offering something different. So they do want to leverage the functionalities, features that come from different clouds. Also, a lot of they are doing a lot of things on-prem because nobody can just live in one cloud. So uh, while we, we like, you know, locking themselves in one platform versus being able to move around, how important is that? Yeah, I think that is uh, very important for enterprise, right? Uh, so enterprise, they don't want to lock into a single cloud environment. Uh, but rather, they want to uh, have the freedom that they can deploy the right workload to the right cloud and consume the right service. So uh, having a platform like a special cloud, we are totally right, cloud environment and vendor neutral. So that will give them really the choice, be able to deploy Kubernetes clusters uh, into any cloud environment, whether it's public cloud, private cloud, or even bare metal. Uh, and uh, take uh, the best advantage of all these a variety of the cloud services as well. Now uh, we understand the whole landscape. Now let's talk about this announcement that you recently made to make a uh, Spectre Cloud available on all this uh, cloud. What was the need at this point, and what does it really mean for existing, uh, or for the customers who already have their deployments on these clouds versus those? who are planning to deploy? We announced uh, last week uh, about the new capability that uh, uh, that we are uh, uh, now uh, allow customer to directly uh, uh, using our platform to still manage their existing clusters. Because uh, we firmly believe, right, uh, for customer to adopt a new modern management platform, uh, they should not be required that they have to tear down all their existing clusters, right? And, and provision new clusters. So we want to prevent their existing investment. Um, but in the meantime, they should be able to take advantage uh, of a special cloud's unique capability that make uh, their Kubernetes lifecycle management easier, even for their existing clusters. We are almost, you know, the first quarter of the year is, uh, you know, we are almost at the end of March. Uh, you just announced this release. It is, uh, I don't, I'm not looking for any product announcement, but if I may ask you, what what plans you have for this year? Or if you look at the Spectro Cloud's uh, kind of roadmap, can you share that with me? For 2021, we see enterprise uh, uh, will continue uh, to grow uh, Kubernetes, right, uh, in a major way. So Kubernetes, I think that their adoption really become uh, uh, in the mainstream now, right? Uh, so uh, our goal is really to help enterprise to adopt Kubernetes even easier, right? Reduce uh, all the management burden and uh, also do it right, right? So a lot of our enterprise, uh, uh, they still relatively new to Kubernetes, right? So through our platform, I think we can help them to reduce uh, the skill set requirement and uh, make things uh, a lot more uh, reusable and also all the best practice baked in uh, so that uh, that will really re reduce their management burden. Uh, for 2021, uh, I think in terms of company initiative, I think there are uh, mostly in kind of a few areas. Uh, the first one is um, our platform. Uh, we uh, have been 
mostly sell to enterprise, right? That uh, uh, help them to manage Kubernetes in variety of cloud environment. Uh, but very recently, we also turn on self service. So we want a user be able to directly uh, sign up uh, through our our SaaS platform, and they all they need is just put in their cloud account. Uh, or if it's a private cloud, they can deploy, download and deploy a virtual appliance. And then through our SaaS portal, they will be, be able to self-service directly deploy and manage Kubernetes themselves. Uh, so this uh, will really get them uh, a very easy way to try the product, right? And, 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 and um, uh, see the value out of it. Uh, and also, secondly, we also see uh, a lot of um, enterprise, they actually now interested uh, in uh, deploy Kubernetes uh, directly on their metal machines, right? Uh, so that will further reduce uh, some of the uh, manageability overhead uh, in terms of uh, deal with a hypervisor, uh, deal with uh, uh, additional right uh, uh, VMware ESX host uh, management and the security patch. Um, so uh, through our platform, uh, unlike some other vendors, so we it's not just like let user to bring your own base OS and then we deploy and manage Kubernetes on top of your previously deployed uh, base OS. We can actually handle end-to-end bare metal Kubernetes management. Right? So from the initial OS to Kubernetes, right? all we need is just uh, have your bare metal machine, right? and then we'll be able to bootstrap from there. Um, and also, we do see uh, edge is a big opportunity, right? So this um, uh, not only with uh, telcos, right? With the five G, uh, there's uh, a lot more uh, workload will push to the to the edge location uh, or, or to the metro data center, uh, but also. Uh, more and more advanced uh, edge computing use case because there are so much data generated uh, at the edge location and it's not economical to send all those data direct to, uh, directly to cloud or to a central data center, right? Especially if you want to do uh, AI-based, uh, let's say, facial recognition or you want to do some uh, uh, intelligent push uh, promotion based on user visit, right? And based on some IoT sensors, collect data. Uh, so all these will require user really have a kind of a local compute at the edge site. Uh, but all those edge, you will know, there will be some particular challenge, right? So they may not have the qualified IT personnel there to maintain the hardware. Uh, they may not have a very reliable network. So how to be able to centrally manage all these Kubernetes cluster in the edge location, it's very low touch, almost uh, right, plug and play, uh, and uh, also be able to uh, to tolerate the network latency uh, and, and occasionally disconnect, right? So those will be all some of the unique capability that we will provide uh, through Special Cloud as well. Henry, thank you so much for taking time out today. And we talked not only about the announcement that you just made to bring uh, Spectro Cloud to all three platforms. We also actually talked about the whole evolution of Kubernetes challenges and the new use cases, especially in the 5G and edge space. Uh, for, thank you for your time today. And I look forward to talk to you again. And this is a time for you to have any closing thoughts before we wrap this up. We're very excited uh, uh, about the, the space uh, uh, we're in. Uh, we continue to see Kubernetes uh, uh, is adopted by uh, enterprise right, uh, in a big way. Uh, and the uh, Spectral Cloud, uh, we are, uh, uh, we are very focused to help enterprise to reduce the Kubernetes management burden to accelerate uh, their journey to the cloud native world. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you.